Hi everyone! Welcome back to Resonate the Sound. I'm Chris Hanukkah. I'm Brian Adams, Senior Pastor of Resonate Church. And if you have been with us the last couple weeks, I'm uh, say over a month plus, we're now inside the second month, and you've been with us here on this journey of the Power of the Blood Seven Spots, we do want to indeed say thank you for being here with us each and every single week yeah. of this journey. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in with us and checking us out and, and experiencing Jesus with us. Man, we, are, we are so grateful for you to take some time out and to tune in to us and listen to us and, and experience with us. We, we love you so much and thank you so much. Absolutely, and you know, because of the fact that you know you support us each, each and every week, which is way more than enough and way more that we're way more than grateful to you for doing it. We have a little bonus. Bonus. Yeah, I preached this in the middle of this sermon, in the series. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, God was directing me that I needed to, this one day needed to chill, so we went with mm -hmm. surrender control. Mm -hmm. And if you really look at this sermon, it is tied up from one end to the other yes. <laughs> with this whole series. But today, today it's all about surrendering control. And, and what we mean by sur surrendering control is, mm -hmm. have you gave God all control? Yes, yeah. and let's not waste any time. If you really, really want a whole lot more, especially inside this bonus, we'll let this bonus speak for itself. We need to surrender control. We yes. need to get you to this thing. We need yes. to get you to this sermon. Absolutely. Yeah. So hey, get that highlighter. Highlighter. Get the pen, get the paper. Yeah. Make sure you have everybody around you. Yeah, and I recommend you pray before you listen to it. Absolutely. And hey, we do want to say thank you for joining us right now. Let's go surrender some control, shall we? That means surrendering that control to God. Yeah. Let's go resonate, shall we? So tonight we're going to talk about surrendering control. Um, we want to talk about it in a way that helps you and makes you realize that you are more valuable and more important than what you realize. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. See, because I, I want you to get this, and I, and I want to start this way. It's kind of starting different for me, but I want you to think about this. We've all had those moments when the devil comes up against you and says, you can't change. You're going to fail. You can't make this. Right? We, we've all had that, right? And here, here's the one here lately the devil's been throwing on me. He's like, you're just not strong enough. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be pumping up. But anyway, uh, but he does that. He told me that he told me a couple times a day, you're not strong enough. And I'm not talking about gym stuff. He, and I was praying over the church. He goes, your church ain't strong enough yet. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh we are. And, and he's like, oh, no, you're not. I said, oh, yeah, we are because we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And being redeemed takes me back to where we can have strength. Being redeemed means that we are complete in Christ. Amen? So I want you to understand something. When the devil is messing with your mind and he tells you that you can't do something, you need to realize that's your first notice that it is possible. I need you to look at things different. When it feels like you can't do something, you need to understand that's God giving you confirmation that it's already been done. He's just waiting on you to walk through it. Are you hearing me? Most of the time when we hear the devil mess with us and tell us we can't do something, we're like, oh, God, Jesus, John, I just can't do it, right? Come on. But really, we need to learn when the devil says you can't do it, you need to realize he's afraid of you, or he would not be telling you you couldn't do it. That's right, that's right. That's powerful. Did you hear me, church? That's powerful. That changes it. Instead of feeling beat up, now when he gives me something that's in, not encouraging or he tells me, you're going to fail, you're not strong enough, or you're, you know what I'm saying? Now I kind of get excited. I'm like, oh, that means I am strong enough. That means it's already in the heavens. That means it's already been spoken. Yeah. It's going to come to pass. Amen? So I want to look at something, and I want to tie you to Jesus. Sometimes we feel like we're really far away from Jesus, not only in our relationships, but sometimes we don't. We can relate to Jesus because the picture that we paint, you know, he is God. Can I get an amen? But sometimes at the picture we paint, we make him so unapproachable. We make him so uh, uh, unreachable that I want to slow down and I want to look at a couple of verses and, and, and teach on some things. And, and man, we're going to talk about surrendering control. Amen? amen. I'm a firm believer that once you give God control over everything, everything begins to change. Amen. Hello? So let's go to Matthew 26, 39. Amen. And this is so cool. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and he prayed saying, Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but 
as thou wilt. Ain't that awesome? Can, can we break this down a little bit? I want to show you some stuff. I want you to realize that when, you know, we talk about the power of Jesus a lot in this church and what authority we have, and it's an awesome authority. Amen. We can do a lot of things, but sometimes we need to stop just looking at the authority he gives us, and we need to stop and look at his life. Jesus said at one point in the scriptures, he said, hey, come learn of me. Okay, he wasn't saying, come learn of me because I'm God. He was like, come learn of me. Come learn of the struggles I went through. Come and look at the moments that I had that I didn't think I was going to make it. Like, this is my favorite one, and I've been preaching on this a lot here lately, so get ready, we're going to do it again. But I want you to understand, he said he went a little farther. Now, I want you to get this. Some of us feel like we can only go a little farther. Some of us don't feel like we can make the whole journey of serving Christ. Some of us don't feel like we can even make it no farther than the next step in this service. Come on, you know I'm talking to you. So you need to realize this is Jesus. Jesus is basically telling us that this you know, statement here. He went a little farther, which means ah, I, just, I can't make it no more. I, can't, I don't want to go no farther, but I'm going to no matter what. Now, if you look at that, that's powerful because what that's doing, that's showing us that Jesus as the human, come on, as the flesh is showing us that there's going to be days that we don't feel like we can make it any farther. There's going to be moments that we don't think we can make the next two steps. And, and you know what? Our flesh we can't but when we surrender our will to God's will we can make them two extra steps now check this out he says he went a little farther and what he do he fell on his face and I want you to get this this is an awesome thing here we are all the time so worried about falling but you got to realize something when you fall what do you hit first your knees. So some of us need to learn that the reason we're falling ain't because we're quitters, ain't because God don't believe in us, it's that he's finally knocked the legs out from underneath you so you can finally surrender your will and say, God, I'm down on my face. I'm just seeking you. I'm just trying to have a stronger relationship with you so I can surrender my will so I can go forward. This just turned into Sunday morning. How y'all doing? That's why I passed. I'm sorry. I was going to be really calm and cool. But, but I'm just cool. Amen. Praise God. But I want you to get this. When he falls on his face, now can we teach? He, 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 you got to think, he just went a little farther than he wanted to. Can I get an amen? amen. Faith with works. Right. It didn't say he went a long ways farther, just a little bit. So maybe he was at this step. Can you see me? I just can't go no more. But something on the inside said, just go a little farther. Well, even if it's one step... It's farther than you were yesterday. It's farther than where you were five minutes ago. Come on, somebody. We need to learn to celebrate the little victories. So he went two steps farther. Who knows, all right? Next thing it says, he fell down. This is awesome. We think when we fall that we, we, we lost. Or, or, or it's, it's, it's a, a major upset. We need to understand our relationship with God. He's not going to be caught off guard by what we're doing. He's not going to be upset. In fact, he's probably the one that tripped us. Oh, come on. So he falls on the face. In other words, he's, he's down, he's out. Now, I want you to get this. It looks like he's out physically, but he ain't out spiritually. Check what he does when he falls. Now, this is a perfect example of Jesus. When he falls, he says, oh, my father. Now, I don't know about you, but that translates in, Dad! I just wanted to try the new echo things out. And what that means is, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that. But, but what he's saying is, he ain't just saying, oh, Father, uh, which is in heaven. He, he didn't become British all of a sudden. So what he was saying is, oh, Father. Now, I want you to think about this when he says it. You, you guys just read, but I want you to step into the words. Oh, my Father. In other words, I'm, I'm making another step. I can go a little farther for you. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, I, oh, my Father. I didn't mean to fall. Lord, forgive me for falling. Forgive me. Oh. And that's what he's doing. He's saying, oh, oh Father, Father, I didn't mean to fall. I didn't mean to fall short. So this tells me that Jesus is letting us know, because he was God in the flesh, that there was a moment that he even tripped up and fell, and he was afraid that he disappointed God because he couldn't go, Father. Ain't that perfect? And then check about it. He says, Father, if it be possible, check this out. Not possible to get me up. Not possible to wipe the dust off of me. Okay. But Lord, if it's possible, 
can you make this cup pass for me? Now, some people don't understand cups, so let's really talk about it for a minute. Instead of getting all biblical, we're going to make it where you understand it. I can't do this task. I, fe- I just fell. Lord, I just fell. Lord, I didn't mean to fall. But Lord, since I'm failing you, listen to me. This is great. Lord, since I'm failing you, can you make this pass from me? Are you hearing me? And see, so many of us in here, when we make a little hiccup or we make a mistake, we're like, oh, God, don't love me no more. And, and I got to go do all these crazy But no, no, all you got to do is just realize that when you can't go no farther, all you got to do is say, Lord, Lord, I need you. Father, I need you. Now, check this out. This is awesome. Let this cup pass for me. And then, you notice how it's written here. Now, I want you to think. He didn't say this like we read it. We read it like this. Oh, Father, if thou be, I don't know where that came from, but there it is. Oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, Lord, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now, listen, when we read it that way, he kind of sounds stuck up. Oh, Father. <laughs> right? But can we read it how he probably done it? He falls. Oh, Father, oh, Father, Lord, I keep failing you. Lord, can you take this from me? Lord, I don't know how you think I'm going to handle it because, Lord, look, I just fell. Lord, this flesh is worse than what we realize. Lord, I, 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 just, I just fell. But, Lord, if you can make this pass for me, will, will you let it pass? Because, Lord, I'm a, I'm a failure. And let's be real. We've all been at that moment. But the next moment I'm fixing to bring forth is the moment no one wants to preach on. Can we preach? It's the moment of, can't believe I failed him. Can't believe I would my on the ground. I can't believe I just asked him to take that cup. But, nevertheless, Lord, th- th- then if you think about what this nevertheless means, it means never mind what I just said. Nevertheless, Lord, not as I will. Don't do what I just asked you to do. But, but Lord, let me do your will. Yeah. So when we read it, it mean, we read it like he never had a hiccup. But we got to realize that Jesus had to be flesh. He had to go through our struggles to be able to nail everything to the cross. So when I see this, I see him pausing going, oh, I just failed again because I asked him to take it. Nevertheless, Lord, 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 never mind what I just said. Never mind. And what's so powerful here is if we've been studying about the blood, we know at this moment, we know when he goes to pray a little more harder in a minute, that his sweat turns into great drops of blood. And we know at this moment we get our willpower back. But let's stay where we are for a second. So I want you to get this. Here's Jesus. He was so aggravated. He was so disappointed. He couldn't go no farther. And he crashed. I want to get one, one point, and everyone write this down if you're doing it for a side note. You'll always want to quit right in the beginning, and you always think that's when the battle's at the worst. But this, Jesus done that. Look at this. He was ready to quit before they even came to get him. So a lot of us are ready to quit thinking, oh, this is the worst it's going to get. It's not the worst. We still got the journey of them coming to get us. We got the journey of being mocked. We got the journey of being tried. Hello, somebody. So even Jesus, before it even got rough, decided to quit. But he didn't. And the reason he didn't, he's like, you know what? I need to pray that I make this, but I need to pray that I get my willpower back. Because my spirit is able, but my flesh is week. And that's awesome. We're going to get to that. Y'all with me? Hello. Come on. This is awesome. I love this. So check this out. I'm going to tie me into it. And this is my personal testimony about as close as you're going to get it. Okay? Okay. I was desperate to quit drugs. I would say, I'm not going to do uh, any more drugs. I- I'm done. I'm done with this right now. I'm not going to do no more. And, and, and I'd even make a vow to tell Carmen and them, I'm going to quit forever. From now on, I'm going to quit. I'm never going to do them again. Hello. And, and to be honest with you, I would even throw my dope away. Or I'd get rid of it and whatnot. And the problem was two, two hours, within two hours to an hour later, I would be back where I threw that out looking for my stash. 
I have caught myself going through trash bins. Hello, looking for what I got rid of because I got rid of it because I was never going to go back to doing it again. Uh, no, bear with me. Come on, it's my life story. You can just get tired of it. And then I had this other problem. Now listen, this, this hits some of you. I used to be full of hate, violence, and anger. And I would say, I don't want to explode on anybody because my anger is vicious. Come on, somebody. And, and, and I don't want to be like this anymore. And I used to cry to Carmen. I don't want to be this mean old man no more. I, I don't want to. And you know what, Sister Becky? I'd quit. And I'd be, I'm not going to be that mean old man. And, and from this day forth, I'll never do it again. I never will do it again. But you, but you know what would happen? I, I couldn't never stop with that anger. And I would always go back to doing drugs. Hello? It's because I didn't have no willpower. I didn't want to do what was destroying my family. But I haven't been covered under the blood yet. So I didn't have the willpower not to want to do the urge. That makes sense? Are you hearing me? Listen, apply it to what you're fighting. Maybe it ain't drugs. Pray God, I pray it ain't. Maybe it, it ain't anger. But is there jealousy? Or is there something that's before you and God that you don't want to do no more? Or you want it out of the way, but for some reason it keeps getting in the way? Well, I can tell you what it is. It's because you ain't got the real power. You haven't put it underneath the blood of Jesus yet. You're trying to handle it instead of letting his real power handle it. And I'll teach you. You ready? Are you with me? See, listen, I tried to quit all the time. I wanted to, but I just couldn't. I wanted to, but I just, I couldn't. And I didn't have no willpower. But check this out. My spirit was willing, but my flesh was Matthew 26 and 41. Listen, everyone say, sometimes we're weak. Can I give you a perfect example of being weak? Here's Jesus. Watch and pray that yea, you are not into temptation. Now think about this. He's already prayed a couple times. He's already fell down on his face. He's already had his moment that he couldn't go no farther. But now what's he doing? He's going back and he's warning them. Hey, 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 you need to watch. Now I want you to get this. You need to watch. So that tells us that temptation won't come in a spiritual form. It will come in a physical form because we can see it. Oh, come on, church. And while we're watching for it, we need to pray. When we see it coming, we need to start praying. Make that avoid me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come, Oh, come on. You can tell when your drug dealer's coming. Come on. You can tell when you shouldn't be on that app that keeps popping up. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? You can tell when you're getting mad and you're getting jealous. You can see it coming. That's why he told you, you need to watch. You, you better watch for this temptation. Because when you see it, you need to get to praying. Because you won't have the willpower to conquer it. But if you're watching and you see it coming, you can start praying to me and we'll use my willpower because you got your willpower by me shedding my blood. That's powerful. Come on. So he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And I love this. I love that this. this is Jesus talking, y'all. The spirit indeed is reeling, but, but the flesh is... This is so awesome. You want to know why this is awesome? Jesus is saying, hey, look, I'm going through this myself, y'all. And he explained it to his disciples not by saying... You're weak because of this. He didn't condemn them. Can I teach? He didn't. Come on, where you at, man? He didn't condemn them. He 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 peed himself right in the middle of the mix. Hey, man, listen. We need to be watching and praying. That mug is on his way. The devil's attack is around the corner. You need to be watching and you need to be praying because we don't want to fall into. Uh, now we all know who didn't pray and we all know who didn't watch. Peter <laughs> becomes a ninja out of nowhere, right? Some say he has a sword, but if you study it out, he had the knife from the Passover. And I, I just want to give you nuggets every once in a while because I want you to study, okay? So all of a sudden, he pulls out this knife and, okay, now think about this. All the disciples are there counting Jesus. And the one that didn't hear him was the one that becomes one of the main leaders later. That lets us know that even if we make a mistake, pick yourself up because there's still people you got to lead. That's right. And you know what? If you pick yourself up from making a mistake, you'll lead better than telling them. And he learned that where? Because Jesus is right now telling him this. Jesus is like, check this out, y'all. We need to be watching. Brother Christian, you need to be watching. Kenna, you be praying. Tyler, get your eyes open. And watch how he does this. That, yea, enter not into temptation. Because you know what, boys? Let's just be real. The Spirit's weak. Or the Spirit indeed is reeling. I said that backwards. Be all right. Keep up with me now. My Spirit's reeling, but, but my flesh... 
My flesh wants to quit. My flesh don't want to watch for the temptations. My flesh don't want to. My flesh don't. Listen, listen. Two things. My flesh don't only. The, my flesh doesn't only not want to watch. But my flesh don't even want to pray. That shows two states that a Christian can be in. Two dangerous states. A state where we can't even watch when attacks are supposed to be coming. And even worse when you can't pray about the attack that you're seeing. Can I teach real quick? How many of you know something ain't right? And you're like, oh, I've seen it coming. I know better. I know. I know. Mm, come on. And then none of you pray over it. What good is being a watcher if you're not a prayer? What good is it to watch if you're not praying? Peter watched. He knew which one he was going to cut the ear off of, but he didn't pray that he wouldn't lose his anger. Can I teach real quick? In other words, Peter didn't pray long enough to get rid of his self-control. He was still controlling himself instead of letting God control him. Some of you do that with your anger. Some of you do that with your jealousy and getting upset. You're, you'll, you'll, you'll let that motion react and you'll kill something that could have brought you life. Come on, somebody. That's good. So, so I want you to get this. Okay. So here's the question that I get asked a lot. How is it that Jesus can set us free when we cannot do it? on our own that makes sense right why why can't we do it on our own if if we're made in his image and we do all this why can't i not just conquer this why why is my willpower weak why do i struggle with this addiction or why do i struggle with uh, this bad habit look man look and there's worse things than drugs there's worse things than alcohol it's a bunch of christians that sit around that comes up for a reason not to go to church come up for a reason not to read the bible come up the reason not to be involved but you all want to blame it on the drug dealers the drug people and whatnot but you know what they're not seeking jesus no more than you are yeah. That's right. you're sinning just as bad as them so hi i love you I, I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to be surprised how many people think they're going to heaven that ain't going because they're doing the same little, it's disobedience. No matter what you want to call sin, it's disobedience. It don't matter if you're, you killed somebody, a drug dealer or not, or just someone that just simply is a Christian that is not obeying God. Hello? That's really good. Come on, somebody. So I want you to get this. So here he is. Jesus is saying, you know what? I can set you free, but I can't do it under your power. You got to do it under my power. And that's beautiful because I want you to get this. When Jesus' sweat in the Garden of Gethsemane started turning into blood, hello, ain't that awesome? Come on, we've been preaching on the blood. Guess what happened? That gave our willpower back. Our willpower was not only given back, but everyone say redeemed. Redeemed, redeemed means brought back to the original state. state, and that's awesome. That goes all the way back to the garden. Now, th think about this. It surpasses the garden. I'm going to blow your mind. You ready? He says he knew us before the world was formed. That's right. So we can get past the physical things, even the Garden of Eden, how perfect and beautiful it was. We even passed that. We were with him in a secret spot. Bible says that when God made me, he made me in secret from the heavenly council. Hello. That's, right. that's why it's so personal. That's, why, that's another reason why he can call you son. He, where everything else he just spoke, he took time and created you. And Bible says that he made you in his own secret spot. And if you really study deep, it says that he already wrote out how he wanted you to be. He wanted Brian to have a lot of hair when he was in high school. And now he's going bald and he's dreaming of it. And I'm okay with that. You know why? Where most people would be upset about going bald. And I was for a couple of months. I really was. And God said, why are you upset? It's how I wanted you. That's how I wanted you. And that made me think of something that my dad told me one time. Uh, when he first got sugar diabetes, he, he didn't handle it very good. Adam says have bad tempers. It's all Pam's fault. Um, but but he, he got really mad, Mama Reeves. He got mad, and on the way home, he pulled over on the side of the road and just had an Adam's fit and worked over his dash, like beating up a dash in the car was going to make him feel better. And he says over his radio, he says it wasn't an evident voice of God. He says the radio was playing some old music that Dad liked, you know, ding, 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 ding. But anyway, it was playing. He said all of a sudden a voice came over the radio and said, would you rather me give you cancer? And he said, he cried out. He goes, why? And, and, and he said that voice came over the radio and said, because you can handle this. You couldn't handle cancer. Think about that. All things work for the good of them. We, we know who makes us sick. We know God wants us to be healed. We know that. But we also know that God sometimes looks down and says, see my servant Job? See what you can do to him. Come on, somebody. 
so what I'm getting at is God had that, my dad had that moment where he was mad and had anger and he lost self-control. And he was second-guessing God. God, why would you give me sugar diabetes? Why would you do that to me? God's like, would you rather me give you something else? Come on. So what that means is God was trying to tell him, hey, man, get back in control and let me have control. Because I didn't give you nothing that you can't handle. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come on. Right? That's awesome. Once dad gave him that self-control and, until really we found out he had heart problems, dad flowed good with that. But guess what? Can I tell you what sugar, sugar diabetes did for dad? It made him have a routine. It put his life back in order. Hello. Were you all quiet? Sometimes you don't notice the little things. God seen my dad was going wacko because he used to run these big factories and had every minute of the day planned. Gave him sugar diabetes, kept his mind from going crazy because he had a plan when he was going to take this pill, when he was going to do that and have to eat that. Oh, come on. If you can't find God in that, I can't help you. I don't know what to tell you. But, but, but check this out. God wants us to do that. So in other words, people ask all the time, how can Jesus set us free? Well, it's by the sweat that turned into blood. See, what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden was restored in the Garden of Gethsemane. We all have the right to say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Ain't that awesome? Now, let's get to surrender control. And I love this, and I want to talk about this. We're going to go to Exodus 3, verses 11 through 15. Ain't God good? Man, it's a great atmosphere in here, ain't it? Oh, man, ain't it really good? Look at your neighbor and say, it's great. You're saying, what are you doing? I'm trying to get you more involved in class. I'll start throwing you mints if you open your mouth. You know? But I want to get off on this because this is the beginning of the self-control part. And I'm going to teach you some stuff, and I'm going to go over it. Listen, I want to make sure if I go over a couple times, it ain't because I think that you're silly and don't understand it. It's that I want to be a pastor that teaches you enough word that you get it. When you go home, you can study it, okay? So don't ever think bad when I say, hey, we're going to do it again, all right? Exodus 3, 11 through 15, you ready? And Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Come on, next verse, please. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. I love that. Ain't that awesome? Hey, what are you freaking out on, man? I'm going to be there. Ain't that how God is? And I, can, can, we, can we really look at the writing real quick? Listen, there's a lot of different versions out right now. you got the NIV, and you got a lot of them. They're taking a lot of scriptures out. They really are. Okay? Right. So, look, get into a deep Bible that keeps all the scriptures. Realize, though, that King James ain't correct, and I'm fixing to show you some stuff in a minute. But realize with an open mind that the Bible says that the Word of God does not go out void. So even if they're reading one that's not what you would read, if they're getting the Word, hush up. Amen. Okay, check this out. I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, they shall serve God upon this mount. That's so awesome. Next verse, please. And Moses said unto God, Behold... When I come into the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me. I love that. The God of your fathers, not the God of him. Can we teach? This shows a little weakness right here with Moses. He didn't say, Hey, the, my God says we're going here. He didn't have enough confidence in himself yet. So he's like, Hey, hey, the God of your fathers. <laughs> well, just the same as mine. Right, come on, come on, somebody. I said, don't bug no one but me. Have sent me unto you that, and they shall say unto me, here we go, you ready? What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Well, first off, you probably should have told me it was your God, but that's different. Okay, you ready? Go on, please. And God said unto Moses, now listen, I want you to get this. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, this shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Now, can you picture that conversation? Who do you want me to tell them you are? You tell them the I am or the I am? Now, look, you don't think God's hip and cool. Something's wrong with you. Huh? I am, I am. Come on, somebody. That would be a number one band. Don't even look at me like that. And God said unto Moses again, I am that I am, and he said, This shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So who, who sent you? I am. Go to the next verse, please. And I love this. God said, Moreover unto Moses, This shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord thy God of your father, fathers, 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Now, I want you to get this. He didn't think enough of Moses to say, you're God yet. But yet, he still believed in enough of Moses to let him lead people out of bondage. Stop beating yourself up like you don't think you're qualified. Moses had a speech problem worse than my gap. Come on, somebody. Hello. Come on. I'm being real. I got a speech problem. I ain't got no problem with it. It don't bug me as much as it bugs you feeling like you got to correct me all the time. Come on, somebody. But think about this. What I'm getting at is here he is, and he's not even being named in the top five people, and Moses is flat out being told, hey, you're going to lead them out. Don't ever think God can't get you to lead people out. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen to make me feel better? Thank you so much. This is, I want you to get this. Has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my, what, memorial unto all generations. In other words, simply, you're just going to tell them, I am. Everyone say, I am for me real quick. Okay, I want you to get this. I am in this verse translates to Yahweh. That's powerful. Hello? Everyone's looking about what got dropped. I just dropped the Yahweh ball, man. That's what that was. Uh, I am, in these verses, are translated Yahweh. And can be translated like this. I will be everything you need me to be when you need me to be it. Hello. That changes everything. I'm going to show you in the New Testament where Jesus just knocks them flat down here in a minute. But check this out. In other words, he's saying, you know what? I'm going to be what? I will be everything you need me to be and when you need me to be it. Now, that takes all the guessing out. Hey, God, what, who are you? What can you do? I can be anything that you need me to be, and I can be that thing anytime you want me to be it. Now, do you understand what he's saying here? In other words, my part of it, God's saying, my part's done. Yahweh's took care of his part. I can be anything you need me to be when you need it. So what's in the way? Why ain't it happening, God? If you, you can be anything I need when I need it to be done, what's in the way? Why ain't it happening now? And it's simply because you haven't gave God self-control. Because for him to take that effect means you have to believe that. Hello, you with me? You had to believe it with faith, with works. Come on. And faith with works is, you know what? I believe you are everything I need, and I believe you are everything I need right now. So, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Because if I try to do it on my own, God, I'm going to bend your word the way I need it to fit my sinner life. Ooh, come on, somebody. Or I'm going to bend it to make you look this way or that way. But, Lord, if I surrender all, I'm just walking in your presence. Can we do it this way? In other words, if you surrender control to God, you're walking in Yahweh. You're walking in everything that you need. You're walking at everything you need at this moment. Hello, did no one get that? You are walking with God right now. So whatever you have need of, he's already took care of it in this moment. Can I get an amen or something? So why are we walking around not acting like we're in that moment? Are we not in Yahweh? Hello. Don't Jesus live inside of you? Hello. Ain't you covered by the blood of Christ? Don't it say once you got saved that you are completing him? Well, do you know why I'm completing him? Because I'm completing Yahweh. He is everything I'll ever need, and he can be that right now. So that means inside of me is everything I'll ever need my whole life, and I can have it at any moment. But for me to receive it, i got to give God self-control. That's powerful. That changes everything. How many of you got a bill you don't know how you're going to take care of? Raise your hand. Just be honest. All right, you know what that means? All right, God, I'm trusting in you. I'm in you. I'm pleading the blood. You're everything I need, and I need it at this moment. I don't need you to take care of it tomorrow, Lord. I'm giving it to you right here and now because I'm giving you all of me. When I surrender control, that means I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to have fear over it. Why? Because I am one with Yahweh. I am one with Jesus Christ. I am completely covered by his blood, which means that I am completely completing him, knowing that means that he is my everything and whenever I need it, and I need it now. And to receive it, all I got to do is turn off one thing, me. That means once you give it to God, it ain't no, uh, Lord, how are you going to pay it? God's going to be like, it ain't none of your business how I do it. You just need to believe in me. Why? Because we surrender. Oh, come on. We we consider. We we surrender. It don't matter if I get it now. It's, It's on God's time. So check this out. I love this. So God told Moses to tell him, I am since you. 
and I'll be their everything. That's why their shoes never wore out. They actually didn't walk in sandals. They were walking on Yahweh. I'll I'll, I'll come back over here. Come on, this is too simple. All right, check this out. So, check this out. He is the same I am for us today. Hello? Do you agree? He's the same I am for us today as he was for the children of Israel. Amen? See, God delivered the Israelites from bondage, captivity. Come on. And guess what? You ready? God is waiting today to deliver you from your bondage and from your captivity. The problem is, you're just not using, I plead the blood. The problem, see, see, when you say, I plead the blood, do you know what that really means? That means I'm not trying to do it by my sweat, by my brow, by my hands, by my feet. I'm surrendering everything by the blood of Jesus. So in other words, I'm surrendering his willpower. I'm surrendering his hands that, that everything I touch will prosper. I'm surrendering his bloody feet that, that wherever I walk, I shall prosper and that shall be my ground. I'm surrendering everything. But when I plead the blood, I'm surrendering all the cross and I'm operating under the authority of Jesus Christ. And I will prosper in everything I touch. And where I go and my feet touch, that is my ground. Oh, come on, where you at now, church? And I will have my willpower back. The devil ain't going to tell me I can't make it. No, no, I don't. come on. We know we're going to make it. I can do all things through Christ who what? How does he strengthen you? Through the blood of his. Come on, somebody. That's just powerful. Amen. There went class. I'm preaching now. Here we go. Check this out. Ain't that good stuff? Amen. Let's look at some stuff. I want you to get this. So, he's the same I am. Everyone say he's the same I am. I'm going to show you something that's just phenomenal. Can we do it? Go to John 18, 4 through 8. When you get there, yell at me. Here in the next month, I'm thinking about teaching a class either on 9 o'clock on Sundays or some odd time about salvation and John going through that book. I think we need more teaching. Hello? You all ready to read now? There we go. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, Went forth and said unto him, Who seek ye? And he answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Where am I getting that at tonight? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto sorry y'all. Jesus saying unto him, I am he. Do you see that he? Do you notice the little things around it? Do you notice it's not capitalized? Okay, that tells you that King James added that. He never said he is he. He don't have to. Because he is the I am. That's right. That's powerful. So when you see little things like that in your King James Version, don't get upset. That, that's King James saying, <laughs> I added that because I couldn't make that sentence make sense in my head. So really, Jesus said to him, I am. Hold up who you are. I am. Can I show you the power of I am? And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. Ain't that funny? Next verse, please, sir. As soon as he said unto them, I am, they went backward and fell on the ground. Can I teach? When he declared who he was in the heavens, the anointing was so strong that they fell under the anointing. Can I really teach? When you're standing in people or obstacles or demons or whatever you're facing is in your way, when you just flat tell them, I am has sent me. I am part of the blood family. I, right. Do you know what happens when you claim the blood of Jesus? The blood falls down. Guess what happens? All that falls at the name of Jesus. All that falls. Like, come on, somebody. So picture this. All of a sudden, Jesus is like, hey, look, look, I already told you, man. I am. Boof. Now, this is how I sit. I got a, I got a big imagination. Well, I'm going back on this side. Mama Marie's really smiling at me. I'm trying to bake rabbits. Check this out. See, I, I believe that when they asked him the first time, he said, I am. They were kind of like, what? What the world's mug saying? And if you could tell, it says, as soon as he said unto them, I am, they went backward and fell to the ground. Can we, can we, can we have a little joke moment? They fell down like them people do when Beanie Hinn used to string his jacket in the 90s. Not nowadays, back in the 90s. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. We all watch them moments. What? What's wrong with that? It's being real. Uh, so in other words, the anointing was so strong. Can we teach that they went backwards and then fell? 
just by him identifying who he is. Can I teach? When you get rid and you give, when you surrender your control, right, and all your problems are standing in front of you, when you surrender control and they ask who you think you are, the great I am says, I am all your anxiety and your fear or your worry or whatever's bugging you falls. Here's another way to do it. When you don't use I am and you're standing there and you're trying to figure out how to handle your anxiety, your bills, your habits, whatever, okay? Right? Come on, worldly stuff, right? When you're standing there and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Guess what? They recognize they don't, they don't see you because you're not coming in authority. But when I see all that stuff coming, because I watched and I prayed. I seen the attack coming. So I prayed. Guess what I prayed? Lord, I'm giving you full control. Guess what happens? Now when the fear and the anxiety and the sickness pops up, they don't see you. All they see is the I am. I am. That's powerful. You know what else is good about the I am? It ties into Yahweh, where he says, I am everything you will ever need. I am. It, that, that makes sense, y'all? That, he's saying, I am. So in other words, he, when, when the, devil see, the devil comes and you need a healing, when you surrender your control, it's I am, sir. In other words, by my blood, he's healed. Come on. I posted something, and I'm going to end with it, but I posted something, I think it was this morning, might have been yesterday, that when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible as the mirror, that you look at yourself. You don't look at yourself the way the world looks at you and you look at yourself. You need to learn to read your Bible and look at yourself the way God sees me. When God sees me and I surrender control, he don't see me weak. He sees me victorious. When I surrender control, God don't see me sick. He sees me healed. Oh, come on, somebody. You're going to say, but I'm not healed yet. Yeah, but, but, but how are you looking at yourself compared to how the one that made you? How are you looking at yourself? There's a difference because when I look at my will, I look like I'm sick and I'm feeble and I'm never going to be healed because I've been having a dizzy spell for the last 30 minutes that normally keeps me in bed for a week, but it ain't going to stop this sermon because I'm not looking at myself how I feel. I'm looking at myself at this moment how God sees me. I am totally healed and I'm recovered, but you're going to say, but you're not yet. Oh, honey, don't you rain on my parade because I've been watching you talk and I've been praying over it. You can just move on, buttercup, because I'm standing on what he promised me. Yahweh said he's everything I need and when I need it. I need my healing now, so I surrender. So you, oh, come on, church. So I'm going I'm, I'm to get my healing because I'm surrendering to God. I'm not going to surrender to my mind that says I'm not healed or maybe healed or maybe it moved this way or maybe it moved that way. I, 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 no, 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 no. I don't look at myself as the old drug dealer and the old mean person I used to be. No, 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 no. I look at myself at how God looked to me. When the world sees a past addict, God says you're delivered. You're new. You're healed. So when I have hard days and, and like now my head's hurting, it's like, no, I don't see myself sick. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. You're going to say, but you're not physically. Oh, but spiritually. I am, and I'm just waiting on my flesh to surrender to God so I can receive my full healing. Because sometimes it ain't that God ain't healed me, it's just that I haven't surrendered my flesh for it to be healed. Let me do it on this side. Sometimes it ain't that God ain't done his part to heal you, it's that you have not surrendered your flesh yet to be healed. You got to surrender your cancer to get cancer out. That's why he called, when he called the sickness, he called it by their name, the thermity. Thermity, come out. In other words, what he's saying is, <laughs> surrender that cancer. I know, oh, Lord, that, this is awesome. In other words, like if you know you're getting up, you just come up, I'm sick, I don't feel good. Okay, great, we can pray that you feel better, but let's pray and get rid of that cancer. So you come up and say, oh, Lord, you know what, I'm surrendering myself. You know how I feel physically, because you said you know how, what I have need of before I ask. You know I ache. You know I'm in pain. You know my mind's bad. God's like, yes, I know. So you know what, Lord, I'm surrendering everything. I'm even surrendering my cancer. I'm surrendering that tumor. I'm sur- oh, come on, church, where you at? I'm surrendering this sickness. Lord, I surrender my headache that's making me black out right now while I preach. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Why? I plead the blood, and Yahweh's my everything when I need it right here right now I'm just I'm surrendering and if I'm not surrendering that how can I ask him to take care of something and not give it to him all right Tyler this is yours Tyler's not here he just ain't coming up quick enough sir right 
Oh, but no. You got, but if he don't come get it, what good is it? Tyler, this is yours, but if he don't make... Right, and so you know what he's doing? He came up with faith that his father-in-law is going to stop messing with him <laughs> and give him that phone. Come on. So he came up with faith with works because faith without works is... So he came up and he surrendered everything. He surrendered his shame. He surrendered his doubt. He surrendered a possibility he might not get his healing. But it didn't matter. He surrendered all to come get it. And then he gets it. You can have that for me. And then once he gets it, it's what is his. Well, what did he do? He surrendered everything. Uh, so say that's cancer. Stand back up. Say it's cancer. And he's praying, Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. And the Lord's like, what healing do you want? You want your spiritual healing? Or your physical healing? Or step up this way where they can see. Uh, what healing do you want? See, sometimes we, we, we just, like, yes, he knows what we had he knows what we have need of before we ask, but that don't mean we should just be weird about what we ask for. Why not be specific? Because when you're not specific, he might just take his own time. Because I don't know about you, but my kid ain't specific with me. Oh, I, I want this, I don't want that. I'll be like, oh, really? You want this and that? Make up your mind, that or this. Because you might get that before you get this, or vice versa, because I just might be honored because you wasn't specific. So say he's praying for healing, How, he's not being specific. Because really at this state of cancer, can I teach? Not only has he got a weakness in his physical body, but he'll be fighting mental things. What am I going to do about my kids if I leave too early? How am I kind of going to be blessed if I die too quick? So his mind's not there. So that means it's spiritual because it says you've got to renew your mind. I am teaching better than you're looking at me. Uh, so he has to have his mind. So, so even though it's a physical sickness, he's battling spiritually because he has to keep his mind renewed. But once he gets his mind renewed, he can surrender all. And he said, no, nah, I'm going to be specific. I'm surrendering my cancer. And you're going to say, it ain't his. Is it on him? Is it part of his flesh? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. It's basic. So... Like, I'm surrendering the cancer. So in other words, instead of God taking it, like we all think he does, he's handing him, here's my cancer, because I'm so out and I believe. Because you're my Yahweh. You're everything I need, and everything I need it to be at this moment. So you know what? What he's saying is, I'm giving it to you. I don't want this cancer. It makes me worry. It makes me doubt. Oh, this is so good, man. Uh, so he hands it. He surrendered. Control over the worry, over the doubt. Right. Now check this out. God goes, oh, good. thank you. I'll take that. Have a seat. Thank you. Fuck you. Uh -huh. And they're like, no, listen, this makes sense. And then we felt good when we first got rid of it. But then as we go to sit down, we don't think there's no difference. Can I teach? May I teach? It's because he's going to walk out and he's going to still feel like there's a nod. Or he's going to still feel unease. But why wouldn't he? God tells us that we are creatures of habits. In other words, our flesh gets used to feeling things. You ever feel like you had that itch? You ever find one tick down here and they say, you know, you feel like 50 ticks? Well, he's always had that feeling. And now when he goes out, what's he going to do? He's still going to feel like, maybe I didn't get my complete healing. Right. Hold up. When Jesus saves you, he makes you complete. Right. When you gave it to him, you didn't hold nothing back, right? So you know what that is? Now you got to replace that empty feeling or that weirdness, you need to replace it. You know what you replace it with? Praise. Yeah. Lord, I thank you. I replace this awkward feeling because I just know it's a void because my cancer's gone. Lord, I praise you in the middle of this. Lord, this funny itching feeling, Lord, I already know you're healing it up. Angels taking care of it. So, Lord, I praise you during this. So, I'm going to ask you the next day, how's your cancer going? Wow, man, I surrender to God. I'm doing great. Right. You're all laughing at me. And you're looking at me like, oh, you know, that might work. Why? Didn't he say by his stripes we are healed? Yeah. So the problem of most of our healings is, is that we don't surrender control. We want to tell him what we need, but we don't want to have to trust him through the journey. It might be, he might go another six months before they say that his cancer is in remission. Then again, the next day, God might heal him completely. Maybe it's up to the, maybe the speed up to our healings and receiving is, up to ourself on how we give ourselves. The faster I give it, the quicker it could come. The more I struggle with giving it to him, the more he's going to linger because he's going to be like, do you really trust me or do you not? 
I'm gonna ha- it's going to have to keep getting worse that I'm finally your only, su- your only source of help. Yeah. Hello. Amen. Why not know that we're sick? Or why not know there's a bill coming? Because it says, watch, pray, yep. and don't fall into what? Temptation. Watch, pray. In other words, watch, give yourself, surrender your control, pray in God, put it underneath the blood, become one in Him. And you know what? You're in Yahweh. And he's everything you need. He'll be everything you ever need him to be. And he can be at any time that you need it. That's this phenomenal. Is it? Come on, ain't it? So check this out. We're going to go back to this. Jesus, Jesus answered and he told him. And I love this. Where did I get to? Six? Well, let's get to seven then. And then they asked him again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, come on, ain't we, ever, ain't we ever been there? Come on. And Jesus answered and he told and he told you that I am, if you notice the I am, the he's messed up, so it's supposed to be I am. In other words, Yahweh, if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Ain't that awesome? In other words, if you're seeking me, don't worry about everybody else. Can we really teach? When are you going to start seeking him and not worry about everybody else? When are you going to surrender yourself and not worry about a prayer team taking care of your prayers? I have found out, this is kind of cool, because I've always thought this, but I got a book in there that they sent me, Pastors at Greater Risk. It's supposed to lift me up, but it makes me feel terrible, so I'll stop reading it. But anyway, one of the top things is, I have, I have like a hundred and something people that come up for prayer, or a call, and ask for prayer in chains. They never pray for themselves because they don't think they're worthy enough, and they don't think they have enough confidence that their prayer would get them healed. Okay, nothing wrong with sharing one another's burdens, it tells us to. But the day that you don't think that you can ask Jesus to pray for a cold to get off of you is the day that you're too far from God. That's right. Or too far from God. Come on. Hello, that's just good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, the key, King James, we learned that, that he is not there. Ain't that awesome? Amen. So, let's do this real quick. All right, let's jump, and I'll, I'll try it again here real quick. Not really, but here we go. Are you with me? Sure. If you need strength, Jesus is your strength. If you need wisdom, let Jesus be your wisdom. Study that word. Listen, if you're ready to submit submit your will to him, are you hearing me? He is there to give you the power to do just that. And you can choose to do things by the will of God, not by your will. All right, now let's talk about me. You ready? Until I gave God con- control over my desires. And I want you to listen to how I worded this. Until I gave God control of my desires, my emotions, and I surrendered, and surrendered my will to him, I was out of control. Can I be really honest with you? Even as a Christian, when I first got back into church for probably the first two to three years, I was a Christian who was out of control. There's a number of you in here that's a Christian out of control. Can I explain what a Christian out of control is? You're doing a lot of things that you don't want to. You wish you wouldn't do it, but for some reason you just can't quit. Or you can't control your emotions, your one way or the other, or you're in and you're out. And you'll blame other people, but really the problem is that you didn't give God full control. Like some of you are even blaming me and like, no, this ain't right. But you loved every part of the sermon until I just stepped on your pinky toe. Seriously. We'll make dedications and say, Lord, I'll do this. I'm ready to go. Put me in, coach. And then you get mad when the coach don't put you in because he knows you're going to take yourself out of the game for three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't want to leave. You didn't want to quit. You didn't want to give up on God. You had all good intentions on being healed and all good intentions is falling through can i get an amen Amen. and what that is is you're trying to operate under your willpower and your willpower won't do nothing but spin out in the sand you you've got to say look lord by the blood that was shed in the garden you gave us back our willpower lord i plead the blood on my mind and i am worth something and i am going to make it and the next time you feel like you can't do it, or the next time you realize you're slipping from God, you know what? You just stop. You just say, no, 
I am not going to be this way no more. In fact, let me just do what I was fixing to do. When it came to me, when I finally surrendered everything, and, and uh, man, I was more out of control as a Christian than I was out of control of being a saint or a devil. Come on, somebody. I'm being real. This being real, guess what happened? All of a sudden, I had to make a stand, and, and I started doing this, Christian. I started saying, no, I will not be angry today. And most of the time, it came out angry like that. Because I'm a violent person. I can be a little bit mad, that's one thing, but I'm talking about I had this thing, and listen, someone's going like, oh, well, you can't be a preacher if you still have it. Yeah, and you still backslide too. Okay, I had that, come on, come on, I'm just too blunt sometimes. Right? But man, I have this violent anger that, like, look, it ain't good enough this to mouth you to make you feel bad. I'll get to the point where I'm ready to pitch you in the ground. And we're talking about some serious anger. Memphis knows what I'm talking about, street anger. Come on, somebody. But, but, well, I, and, I, and finally, man, I, I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to be, I refuse to be angry. That I am not going to be mad at no one today. And I'd yell it at myself. And, then, and, and that didn't work. And I was like, Lord, I don't understand. And God's like, you, you ever realize you're yelling at yourself? You're mad at yourself? Lord, because I don't want to fail you, but I keep failing you. Lord, I want to get off the drugs. But he goes, you ever notice that your two run hand in hand? So what do I need to do? Well, you need to yell at me, but you need to start pleading the blood when you're yelling at me. What? Plead the blood. Go back to the mind. Willpower. Sweat. Got you, Lord. So a couple days went by, and I, and I was fixing to blow up. I mean, blow up. And I was like, no, I, no, I am not getting mad today. I plead the blood over my anger today. I plead the blood over my mind today. You're not going to wonder and make up situations that ain't real. Are you hearing me? So I went from going, you're not going to do this now, I plead the blood, to now that it's like, I plead the blood, you're not allowed to talk to me today. And, but you know what, every once in a while I still have one of them moments because I'm a dad and my baby girl's getting married. Lord, I'm not getting mad today, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. Uh, but real, being real, uh, I'm being really real at the end of this because what you're going through, everyone goes through. Jesus even had some of the same suffering. He couldn't make it but a little bit farther, and he fell on his face. And then he even got mad. Oh, Father! Not mad at him, but mad like, Lord, I didn't mean to fall. I didn't mean That's good stuff. But by the blood of Jesus, we have the willpower to say no to things. He told us, watch, pray. I see trouble coming in the horizon, but I'm not going to let it knock me down. I'm going to make it be my field of prayer. That's awesome. It is awesome. This has been one of my best weeks. I've had this spelled twice, today just now and then earlier, earlier like Monday. And both times I, I, I kind of worked through it. That's what my old timers would tell you. I worked through it. But I didn't work through it with money. I worked through it with the blood. Yeah. Like, I'm not falling out. I am not blacking out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> My body be like, you're going down. I am not going down in the name of Jesus. Guess what? I didn't fall. Now, I might have stood during the days for a little bit. But that's okay. I caught Tyler in the days today at the gym. So it don't matter. Right? He didn't go down either. But I don't know if he was pleading the butter. Like, I need a cookie. I need a cookie. But it was one or the other. It was one or the other. But, but what I'm getting at is, and I want you to get this, here we go, and this is how we're going to end, okay? Is to be able to surrender everything, you've got to know who you are. You've got to know who you are. There's not one of you that ain't made in here that was not made in the image of Christ. You were made in the image of God himself. He made you from the foundation of time. I, can, can, can we really talk? Do you realize how much he loves you? Like me, all, like, like me, like I'd like to go back in the Billy the Kid days because I think I'd be pretty fast. Right, right, don't look at me like that. Some of you just want to go back to McDonald's. Come on, give me a break. But, but what I'm getting at is, in my mind, I think, man, I, I'd been good then. But you, you ever think about how much God loves you? That he refused to pit us in them moments? That he held on us a little longer and cheered us a little longer until he needed us for this moment? That's beautiful, y'all. So check this out. you got to know who you are, and then we're going to end. You ready? James 1, 23 through 25. For if, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like 
into a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Yeah. Amen. If you don't know what we're talking about, Pip McKenna and Christian in front of a mirror and watch. Amen. Come on, I'm not playing. Amen. For behold himself. Now listen, this is awesome. And goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But who's, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Come on, that's awesome. And continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of their work. This man show up. Check this out. No, I'm, I want you to get it. I broke it down like this. I'm going to read it, make sure I don't mess it up this time. The passage of the scripture says that we are going, that we go to a mirror, and the mirror would be the word of God. Right? And see what the Bible says we are. But when we walk away, we forget who we are in Jesus. That's what the scripture means. Is that while we're in him, we know who we are. But once we walk away from the mirror, we don't know it. You ever done that in real life? You ever look good in the mirror? You think you did? Man, I could tell myself again today. Can I do it? I, I shaved in the shower after the gym, trying to be quick. And I do this finger thing so I don't cut my goat, right? So I know I was close. I, I did not notice that I did not touch up my goat and it's a little off on this side. So stop staring at it when I walk out of church in a minute. But you know why I didn't? I forgot about it because I walked away from the mirror. When I was looking at the mirror, I seen it. I should have fixed it right then. But I didn't. I thought, I'll come back to the mirror and I'll remember. I didn't. And that's what most of you are doing with God. God puts you in front of the mirror and he shows you what's out of line and what you need to trim. And the problem is you'll turn, turn from God real quick instead of doing it that moment. And then you forget the areas that God wants to work on you. Ain't that good? So check this out. Here we go. So the devil doesn't want us to experience all the power and the blessings that are ours through Jesus. So check this out. So he does, he, he does everything he can to make us feel like we are never going to accomplish anything. Does anybody ever feel that way? Yep. But check this out. The word of God is like a mirror. Everyone say that. The word of God is like a mirror. Okay, when you read the word of God, when you look at it as a mirror, it, you are everything it says you are. Right. Hold up. Why didn't no one shout? Right? Just asking, don't try to do it now. Right? The word of God is like a mirror. When we look in it, we don't see ourselves the way that the world sees us. We don't see ourselves the way that the devil sees us. I can only see myself as the way that God sees me. So if you're feeling terrible about the way you are and whatnot, stop listening to the world and get back to the mirror of God. Oh, come on, come on, that's just simple. So let me do it this way, and this is... Pretty much, I've oh, got a little bit, but here we go. When you look at a mirror, you see God's word, correct? You see God's word. So that means you see yourself as your heavenly father sees you. Check this out. Jesus sees you healed without sickness. He sees you free without bondage. He sees you full of joy without sorrow. He sees you as a winner, not a loser. Hello, where are you at, church? So when you don't think you're going to make it and you don't think you can do this and it just seems like it's impossible, you know what? Go back to the Bible and give up your self-control and look at how God sees you. He sees you as victorious. He sees you as a prince. He sees you as a leader. He sees you as the head, not the tail. He sees you complete, not incomplete. Come on, that's awesome. And the more we surrender ourselves to God, the more we become what we see in the Bible. Ain't that awesome? I love that. I love that. And I want to end with this. This is one of my favorite endings. And I want to end with this. I want you to think about this. Think about Judgment Day. Right? Think about the Lord looking at you. God's sitting there and all of a sudden he goes, how do you plead? And if we take a look at ourselves in the mirror of the word of God, and if we're honest with ourselves, we all would say, well, here, let me do me. That way you don't get mad. I would look at him and I would say, I'm guilty. Because I'm a drug addict. I'm an, angry, I'm an angry person. I have hate. Lord, I'm depressed. And to be honest with you, Lord, when I look at the Bible and I look at how I was, I'm no good. But you know what's awesome? Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And Jesus leans down and he says, Son, don't plead guilty. Don't plead guilty. Just plead the blood. Just plead the blood. 
It don't matter that I used to be a former addict. It don't matter that I used to be a murderer. Oh, come on, somebody. It don't matter because that ain't how God sees me. And you know what? That's not how I see myself. Yeah, I know what I used to be. I heard about that old guy. But he's dead and gone. He didn't rise. A new man rose. And I am covered by the blood of Jesus. The addict, I don't know who you're talking about. But I can show you the man that is saved. The one that has anger, I don't know that old man no more. But let me tell you about the one that's got joy and got love. They'll talk to you. Oh, come on. Racist? I'm not racist no more. Let me show you the one that wants to love everyone and bring everybody in. And they're going to say, how can you be that? I can be that way because I'll plead the blood. And I got rid of my self-control. And I gave myself all to Jesus. Ain't that awesome? As you stand, we're fixing the end. Here we go. Ain't that awesome? So you need to understand, we need to start telling every drug, drug addict, every addiction, every alcohol, what, whatever their problem is, we need to look at them and they need to look at our lives and realize that they can be delivered, they can be redeemed. Come on, somebody. If you don't ever show them how they're going to, go, how they're going to know they're going to make it. I want to get real, real with you, so like, watch your volume grow soon. This is really real. I want to get real. Drug addicts, alcoholics, and people with depression and anger, are you, are you hearing me? I know you say no a hundred times a week. I know you say you don't want to be that way no more. Some of you that are in church and out of church and this can't be sold out, I know you don't want to be that way. I've lived it. I know. I'm living it. I, I know. But I want to tell you something. Most people cannot say no with their own strength and with their own willpower. Because you say no for a moment, but within a week you're back to doing it again. But you know what? We've all been there. Can I get an amen? amen. We've all been there. You know, it might be that you don't have the willpower to do it yourself, but that's fine. Jesus won back our willpower, and we can do it through his. You know, surrendering control is really, you know, something that's perhaps, you know, it's one of the critical keys in our life, especially if you go and let God have it all. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you really don't surrender everything to Him, mm -hmm. you're truly not all in Him. Right. You know that's that's kind of a cut and drop. Right. But but that's true. You can't be half in and half out. Right. In other words, you can't let God control you on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and then not help you control your downfalls or your heartbreaks or your hurts. Mm -hmm. you, you totally got to allow Him to have control over everything. And the key thing is, you got to surrender control. The key thing about surrender is, you got to think yeah. about this. Jesus surrendered his life for us. Right. And that's powerful because he surrendered his life uh, to give God control. That's why he was mm -hmm. in the garden when we talk about willpower. But when he prayed, Father, not my will be done. What he was doing is, Lord, Lord, I'm giving you control. Mm -hmm. Because, Lord, even me, Son of God right now, feel like I want to back out. But you know what, Lord? Not my will, but yours. So in other words, what Jesus is doing, but hey, God, Father, I, I'm giving you control. Mm -hmm. You, God, you take over. I keep messing it up. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, you know, and a lot of times we make it hard for ourselves to do that because you know we always like to be in control of yeah. everything. When bottom line, anytime we're in control of everything, we mess it up. Yeah. When God's in control, boom, we're all good. And also one of the things, you know, two quick things that we you know that you pointed here. And one of those things is any victory is a victory. Yeah, every victory is. Absolutely. What big, small, a victory's a victory. Celebrate those victories. Yeah, oh, well, hey, sit this up. Not mm -hmm. only celebrate, but praise them victories. Yes! Because if you learn to praise the little, you'll learn to praise the big. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, what's, what, that don't make sense. Yeah, it does, because no one actually knows how to celebrate something unless you learn how to celebrate first. Yes! So you can you learn how to celebrate the little one. And as you celebrate that, you know how to celebrate the next one, you know how to celebrate the next one, and, and man, it just becomes a powerful term because mm -hmm. when you praise God, you're silly. Yes. You're silly. Yes. And you know, you know, I you know I watched a video where um, you know, they did a song called Raising the Roof. Yeah. And it was a gospel song. And it, and I love how when they did the raising the roof or raising the roof with our praises, the glories, you know, the praises go up as his glory comes down. So make sure that any and every victory you got celebrated. And I love the second the second point here that we'll make on right before we leave the air. And I love the, the fact that you and we mentioned it and you saw it at the bottom of the screen during this message. Yes. This. And it really ties it, really ties everything up. It really, 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 really perfectly. What 
Adam lost. And the Garden of Eden. Jesus gained it in the Garden of Gethsemane. I yeah, love that. Yeah, we gained it all back. He gained it all back and then he gave it to us. Yes. I give you all power under heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I don't think we really realize what that means. It says, what you bind on earth will be bound on heaven. What yes. you loose on earth will be loose. You know, sometimes we don't realize the authority. And that's what we've been on here. Yes. Resonate. We don't realize the authority that God gave us. You know what? The biggest thing that we gotta let God do though is surrender our control. Right. Let Him have it. Not operate under our power, but learn to operate under His power. And that's what we're talking about, surrendering control. Lord, I, I wanna fix this my way, God. Because like, you know what, your way, your way is just gonna cause more problems. Surrender, you know, surrender your control to me and let you let me handle it for you. Let me take care of it for you. And if you can get where you can surrender your control to God, there is no limits for God. And, and you know, that brought up that Bible verse where it talks about, you know, God's ways are higher than our ways. His yeah. thoughts are better than our thoughts. Yeah. So instead of it doing it, you know, as the Lipisco would say, my way, how about we try God's way? <laughs> and when you try God's way, his way always is the best. Yeah, his way is always the best. You know, I said something in the sermon. I said each of us mm -hmm. has to make up our own mind either to choose God's will or our will. Mm -hmm. And that's what we mean by surrender control. God, I'm going to live your way, not my way. No, look, I want, I want you guys to get this. That, that, mm -hmm. that don't mean you can't have fun. Right. That, that don't mean right. you can't laugh, cut up, and go do things. Right. That's not what that's saying. That's saying is, hey, God, I'm giving you my will, mm -hmm. and I'm going to live by your will. I'm, I'm going to look for those that need help. I'm going to enjoy life to this. I'm going to celebrate every little victory. I'm going to celebrate every moment. God, I'm going to find you in everything. And that's what surrender control is. Well, let me ask you guys something. Have you really gave God control? Mm. You know, it's a learning process. If I told you it happened all overnight, it's a lot. Yeah. It takes time. Because you gotta learn a relationship with God. To build a relationship with our Master and our Father in Heaven, it takes a lifetime. Think about this. We're down here on Earth, learning how to get closer to Him, pitting the Kingdom of God down here, learning how to surrender control, mm -hmm. learning how to apply the blood, right? Learning how to help and how to give, and how to truly love. Mm -hmm. We're doing all of that so we can step into one day in heaven. And, and ladies and gentlemen. We indeed pray that you enjoyed this whole entire journey as much as we have. We, we've enjoyed this journey, and I'll tell you one thing, this journey has gotten intense, this journey has gotten personal, but bottom line, it's a journey that's worth it. Any walk with Jesus, any walk with Jesus, is the best walk you have ever done. And next week, we have a very special day. <laughs> the sound program yeah. it's, it's our chapel special chapel chapel so awesome our chapel is college age and just out of high school age and it is led by an awesome couple uh, uh miss mckenna is our chapel pastor mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you something you, if you if you want some word that's broke down at your level where you can understand and feel like you fit in let me tell you sister mckenna can bring some word and guess what she will be bringing that word next week because she'll be joining me right here on resonate the sound right here next Thursday. And believe me when we tell you, it is a chapel special because um, we have a little something special for yeah. you next week before we leave the air. Because we ended up having our Resonate yeah. cameras going yeah. and taping right before Resonate came on the air. Yeah. So everyone oh. will get to see a little something extra sure. that kind of helps us resonate the sound. And wow, Pastor, I'll tell you it's personal. And not just because there's a camera here, not because we have everybody watching. And I'll tell you this properly. I've enjoyed the series. I appreciate the Lord using you and guiding you in the series. And by what God has literally showed you through all these places, through this whole heart journey. It's been nothing short of incredible. Yeah. And the best part is we, we know that all things work together for the good. And, 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 and when you read it, I know you probably may think you know that he is kind of the Lord. But when you read this, 
when you read this, really, really read this, everything is for his, his, his glory, his purpose. Not ours. Not ours. And Pastor, I do want to say personally, of course, on behalf of, of our entire staff, on behalf of all of our friends. Thank you for letting the Lord use you to deliver some awesome words through this awesome journey that we have been involved through the power of the service. So it's not the You're welcome. All I'm trying to do is to be an open vessel and allow God to flow through you and, and touch the ones that you need to be healed, you need to be touched on, just be on to you. Uh, we have a motto here. It's all about so, 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 so. And, and we're all about reaching the ones that no one else wants. And you might be some of those. You're welcome to come to this one. We invite you to come, check us out, stay in the service, enjoy with us a little bit, maybe come early, have some coffee and stuff to talk. We're always open. You'll find out there's something unique about President Church. Yes. That one of our people talked about this week. Uh, they're like, Pastor, when I come to the church, you guys have the welcoming center and everyone's standing in there and they're doing this. He goes, but you have the doors open to all the offices. And I was like, yeah, because my office is always open. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, when I walked in, you had people, random people just sitting there talking. And drinking coffee, and you guys are talking scriptures, you're just talking life, you're cutting up, you're taking time. Yeah, because we understand that resonating Jesus is not just always shoving scripture down your throat, but right. really resonating Jesus is loving on you, taking time for you. And man, we're a close family here at Resonate Church. And we ask you to come and maybe check it out. If it ain't your home church, fine. We ain't worried about you attending here. We're worried about you attending him. That's the main thing. Hey, Bob, I got something here. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a part two to this series. And it's fixing to get a little deeper, and it's coming pretty quickly. Woo! We're going to be tuning in for that one. And we also do want to say, hey, for all you churches that decide to join us each and every week. Yeah, we thank you so and, much. And, and you know, that, that I, I know for a fact uh, a lot of you guys always have worship services and all that. But just for you guys to actually take the time yeah. out of your worship services and Matt props to you pastors out there for, for, for really doing that. Big yeah. time. Yeah. And for you guys to really take time out of your schedules just to join us here each and every week, especially on this incredible, incredible, incredible journey. Do, do the service sponsor you says what? Thank you. Thank you. And we do a deep praise and make you and your church be overall one is blessed. And to everyone of you watching at home, and no matter where you're watching this at, we can do the same thing that you do. And because, bottom line, you know, we're way more grateful to God for giving us the opportunity to live. Exactly. It's a privilege, it's an honor to resonate His sound, resonate His word directly to you. And next week will be our chapter special. And I hope you enjoy. Until we see you right here next week. For our senior pastor Brian Carmen Adams, for our entire staff, and everyone here at Resonate, we do indeed say to you show love, give peace, and resonate Jesus. Chapel special next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't we'll see miss it. You can't miss it. We hope to see you here. Good night from Resonate.